Our next talk this afternoon is by Chen Yang Xu from Princeton University, who will talk on K stability of funnel varieties. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, I mean, this is a conference about the uh, Hodge theory. Uh, actually, my talk has a uh, little thing to do with Hodge theory, except that actually, philosophically speaking, the program which I'm going to describe is somewhat like an analog uh, of the non abelian Hodge theory, although this is uh, basically the very nonlinear version, the variety version instead of the uh, bundle version. So historically, people try to find the canonic metric and uh, one kind of canonical metric is uh, the Kalanstein metric. So basically on a compact color manifold, X people trying to find the color four, which satisfies the equation, rich omega is equal to la, uh, lambda omega for some constant lambda. And uh, if one look at this equation and take the class of this equation, then the left-hand side, no matter which match you choose, it's going to be in the C1TX. So it's a first chain class. So in other words, the first chain class has to be proportional to a class of some cater form. And uh, then you can rescale the metric to make the constant to be zero or negative one or positive one. So in the first two cases, I mean, for instance, when lambda is equal to zero, that was famously solved by Yao. And similarly, for lambda zero and negative one, it was solved by Albert and Yao. But this, this was, uh, both of these results were proved in the 70s. The case lambda equal to one is much more tricky. So first, the answer is not, is not always yes. Actually, there is an obstruction. I mean, even in fifties, people already found the uh, Matsushima already found the obstruction. Say that the in this case, we of course we know the variety is called a father variety because uh, the C one T X is positive, so the canonical bundle is uh, anti ample. And uh, Matsushima say that prove that the X has current symmetric will imply that the automorphic group of X is reductive. And uh, this is not a uh, uh, empty assumption on final variety as we all know. So a kind of sub, most delicate uh, obstruction was found by Futaki in the 80s. So he considered the case that the X has a GM action and then he defined some invariant called the Futaki invariant now, uh, to the, nowadays. And he showed that the X has Current symmetric will imply this fucking value has to be zero. So, so these are the obstructions. And uh, to look at the existence, actually, people have kind of like like a variational viewpoint. So, so basically, they look at the space of all smooth scalar metrics. And uh, you can fix the class. For instance, you can assume the class, in the final case, you can just assume the class is, uh, is in the C1. And uh, Mabuchi defined uh, some like a Mab uh, function, K energy function, and I think now it's called Mabuchi function by many people. And he showed that the critical point of such function will give you a color symmetric. So, I mean, anyone, familiar with the analytical story of the non-binary Hodge theory say that this is very similar to, you find the critical point of a Yamius functional on the space of uh, connections. And uh, that critical point will give you Hermitian Einstein metric. So, so in this sense, this is kind of the nonlinear version, this variety version of this Nabil Hodge theory. And uh, of course, we know that there's a five dimensional 
picture of this, I mean, which connects to Mumford's GIT theory. So, so this I think was probably first found by Kempf and Ness. They consider that the G acts on a polarized manifold where G is some like a complexification of a compact group K. So G is reductive because of this. And then on this polarization, they consider a norm, which is K invariant. And uh, then they show that a point is stable in the GIT sense, it's in the Mumford sense, if and only if that, uh, if we consider the function from G mod K to R, which sends G to the log G X hat, X, X hat is a lift of X. And because this, this norm is K invariant, so originally it's defined on G, but now it's K invariant, so it's defined on G mod K. And then it's stable, if I don't know if this is a critic point. So in other words, somehow this like a fine, this searching of a critic point for some functional is equivalent to some stability condition in library geometry. That was uh, the prototype of this kind of thinking. So let me give you a quick explanation of how Kemp and Ness reached this conclusion. So we actually can consider uh, like a C star map to G mod K, such as the S1 map to K. Then we know that the G is actually convex along the image. So now we know that the, because it's convex in five dimensional space, you can think about that the G has a critic point. If and only if that when the, along this kind of ray go to infinity, the ratio is going to be positive. So, so the critical point condition, the existence of critical point is equivalent to the ratio go, going to infinity is, is positive. But, but this ratio, one can calculate, I mean, the, the, the derivative of, the, of this function at an infinity, which is uh, precisely the weight of cyst action on the limit. So, but, but the second condition is equivalent to the GIT stability condition because of Hilmer Mumford criteria. So in other words, there are three things. Why is this GIT stability? Why is this stability along C star? They are equivalent to by Hilmer Mumford criteria. And then the last thing, the, I mean, the second thing, this, uh, this positive weight of, on C star action is equivalent to the existence of critic point by the explanation I gave here. So, so that, that was a picture for, in the five dimensional. And uh, then of course, we want to kind of apply this circle of ideas in, into the study of Kalanstein metric, which is an infinite dimensional space of all the color metrics with a fixed class. So Tim first uh, observed that now for this Mabuchi functional, I mean, we want to construct some like a race inside this space of infinite dimensional space and apply this, this kind of thinking. And uh, the, first, uh, the first approach of, of constru uh, construct constru constructing ray is given by Tian in his 97 paper. In some sense, the construction is a uh, is very simple mind. So basically, you can't, you you fix the embedding, and of x into pn, and then you consider any subgroup of this uh, one parameter subgroup of PGLN plus one, and then you let this subgroup act act on this embedding. Then that will give you a sequence of embedding. So for each embedding, you pull back this forbidden study metric, and uh, then you apply Mabuchi functional on this forbidden study metric, and then you take the derivative. So that so that was uh, like the uh, that was pretty much like the five dimensional version. But Tim calculated that this was 
this limit is actually equivalent to is equal to this photography environment, which was first defined by photography. But now this photography environment was defined on this limit because it's a limit, so it has GM action. So, so in other words, this kind of derivative can be cal calculated as some uh, quantity we, which will, people already know, I mean, by Fadaki's work. And then he showed that now you want to put the rate. So he actually showed that X has kind of symmetric will imply that the essentially the rate is positive. I mean, more precisely, he needed the flat environment to be non-negative and the equality only happens when the special fiber is actually also equal to X. So, so this is what one called K polystability now. So, and uh, Donaldson, a few years later, realized that this Fataki environment actually can be completely formulated in algebraic terms. So, so in other words, the positivity of Fataki environment, now it's completely just a algebraic condition. So in other words, you just consider X for all different embedding into Pn given by like a power of minus uh, kx in the final case, or in general in polarized case, just given by the power of the polarization. And then you look at the, all the GM uh, sub, one prime subgroup, and you look at the limiting x0 computer flying environment on, the, on there. So, so, so this is the algebraic term, but the, the, the subtlety here is that instead of one embedding of x into Pn, one has to consider all embeddings. I mean, the idea is that we have this infinite dimensional space of matrix. So we want to construct some like a matrix such as uh, the pullback of the, of the Fubini's three metric to approximate the, this, this space. I mean, you can imagine that if I just consider a fixed embedding, this approximation is not going to be very good. So, but, However, once you allow all the embedding, then supposedly you have a chance to, to, to show that this approximation behaves well. And that was basically this Yautin Donaldson conjecture say that if I have a final variety, X has color symmetric, if and only if it's K polystable. So, so it really is true that as long as uh, the algebraic quantity is, Satisfy this polystability condition, then the X has a Kalash metric. And by now, this is a server. And uh, when X is smooth, this was proved earlier, like 10 years ago, by Chen Dong, Sun Tian, et cetera. But, but their proof was a very different with what I'm going to talk about today. Because in some sense, in, in what in the approach I I'm going to talk about today is closer to the original version approach and also it's closer to algebraic geometry. Yeah, I will explain this later. But, but this new approach has this advantage that it, it, it actually also works for singular final varieties. So, so it works for all final varieties. One, one doesn't have to assume the, the X is smooth. Okay, so, so let me just quickly explain the analytic part of this story and then I will move to the algebraic part. So, so the analytic part was also very different with uh, what Chen, uh, like the original approach by CDSTL. So, so this approach was a variational approach. It's called, it has contribution from many people. So, so again, as I said, the main technical difficulty is uh, that the space we are dealing with in, in, I mean, this space of metrics is infinite dimension. So the first thing is we have to complete it. And of course, if you have a different way to complete the metric space, you, you, you are going to do very different kind of uh, analysis on it. So for instance, the original approach, which, which was closer to Yao's, was doing uh, uh, 
was quantified using the Sobolev metric. But here we actually use a space called the E1, which is a space of metrics with a finite energy and pre subharmonic potential. So, so this is a, this kind of subharmonic theory to study, for instance, like a Mount Jump equation was also investigated for many, uh, for quite a few decades. And, uh, and the one advantage is that this can, this space, when people actually can study it on the singular space, which unlike the sobre uh, space I think it, so far it's pretty hard to extend into the singular version. And then instead of looking at like a C star, actually they look at the geodetic rays there. So in this space, you can define some certain metric and then talk about geodetic ray. And then people prove that the dim functional is uh, convex along this. I think this was proved by Benderson first. And so compared to the finite dimensional picture, this is one step that we know the convexity. And then we remember what we know, what we want to conclude is uh, from the derivative and to the infinite positivity, positivity of the derivative and the infinite place, we want to conclude that there is a critical point. So, so now we consider this, this critical point, uh, sorry, not, we consider derivative and the infinity place. And uh, Berman, Bookson, Johnson show that this slope at the infinite place is always larger or equal to some kind of analytic construction, uh, sorry, some kind of algebraic construction which they call non-committee metric. So the behind the idea is kind of do non-committee analysis in, in this case. But of course, all the non-committee analysis is essentially it's still algebraic. It's not a, a analytical, a, a analytical in the sense do, we're doing the Euclidean topology. They are doing algebraic uh, geometry there. And then they show that the slope is non-negative than, than this, the, this number. And also they show that the, the, slope, the positivity of this left-hand side, this slope implies this critical point. So, but remember the case stability was defined by some kind of Futaki invariant, or you can similarly define something called D invariant. But, but we defined on something like a C-star degenerations here. Here, they consider something called a non-community metric this two seems to be unrelated, but actually, if you look at the definition of a non-community metric, you realize that this kind of six study generation give you a special class of non-community metric. But again, in some sense, it only give you a dense, dense point inside your, your space of non-community metrics. Now you want to conclude the the Dean function or the right hand side of this inequality is always positive. But if you assume the stability from the original version, you only got a positivity of the Dean functional on this kind of knocking metric induced by test configurations. So again, the question is like, uh, we know certain information, certain positivity of some functional on some like a dense point inside your space, but now the space is uh, the space of non metric, metric, not metrics anymore. We want to conclude it's actually positive everywhere. And this last step is actually completely an algebraic geometry statement because all the non committee the entire space of non metric metric is some algebraic geometric object. And this was proved by Liu, myself and the drunk in, in the version uh, at least when, when X is the father word. I mean, this question can be asked in more general context, but the father word case for this was solved. So, so basically we show that uh, if you just assume X is uh, K stable or D stable, I mean, in the original version, you actually get this stronger version. So in some sense, this is kind of like a compactness type of result. I mean, if you you assume this without, you basically can, it's like you assume this functional is uh, is is uh, positive on the entire 
complete space. But the information we already, we start with is it's just positive on some like dense part, part of the, the, the uh, dense point of, in this space. And then you actually want show that this positivity will imply something stronger, like a uniform positivity, which I actually called the uniform stability. So once you have some like a uniform thing, then, then of course the dense point of version, you can just take the closure to the, to the entire space. And that's what exactly we did. We proved that the stability implies a uniform stability. I mean, the, the, the converse is just trivial, but the, the, that version is completely, uh, I mean, basically it needs lot, lots of uh, heavy input from higher dimensional geometry. So, so from this point on, I will most, mostly focus on the algebraic geometry theory of case, of case stability. Because you can say that uh, the, now the last part of the question was, origin, was or, already an algebraic geometry question. And uh, we actually want to build on more algebraic questions related relate to this. But if you have questions about the analytic part, I'm happy to answer now. Oh, okay, so roughly speaking, I think the the average geometry study of case stability, especially in the final case, was essentially started around 2010. I mean, before that, you know, the case, this notion of case stability was started. Uh, it was first introduced by Ken Donaldson around 2000. Then between 2000 and 2010, there was 10, 10 years. There were some people looking at this notion, but the mostly they look at it through the, the lens of GIT theory. So because, I mean, as I explained, there is a apparent analog between G, the five dimensional GIT case and this, this infinite dimensional scale. But around 2010, People, re I mean, people start to study the algebra part of the theory using high dimension geometry, especially something like a middle model program. And it turns out, at least in the final case, this was much more su successful, uh, as I will explain. But the, I think the, at the, at the beginning of this topic, there were three major questions. So the first is understanding the notion of case stability. For instance, I mentioned that we prove case stability imply uniform case stability. So actually there were a bunch of similar statements like, like this. There are different definitions. Some of them are actually are equivalent, but the equivalent is highly non-trivial. So, so, so this part. So I think this part is uh, essentially uh, uh, completed by now. And the second part is uh, actually that's why I think for many algebraic geometers, of course, to understand the current symmetric is not is basically outside of their territory. However, to study modular space is something where algebraic geometers think about every day, and uh, for a long time, people seems to believe that there is no good theory of final varieties. I mean, I will give you some examples to see why such belief, uh, uh, people have such belief. However, it turns out that once we throw in this case stability condition, then the theory becomes very well. So we actually have a very well behaved modular theory for case stable final varieties. So, so basically the theoretical part of the second point by now is also completely understood. Although, I mean, there are many explicit examples which we, we, we still have, uh, haven't completely understand. And the, the third one is basically an open-ended question that now we have this algebraic condition case stable, we want to check that the, given a final variety, can we can can we show it's case stable or not? So, so in, I think one thing 
at the very beginning of the theory was that we actually have to understand the, the concept notion. We have to develop different ways to manipulate it. Because somehow this definition of, we look at the infinite dimensional, sorry, we can do all the possible embedding and we look at the, all the system degeneration, generation and we look at the photonic environment, that was just too complicated. So, so we have to find some better way to understand it. So by like 10 years ago, Chili and I proved that you the minimum program proved that instead of all degeneration, like all GM degeneration, which was required in the original definition, one actually can just look at the degeneration, which itself is also a far variety. So, so in other words, we just have to understand the far variety degeneration. Of, of a given final word. Unfortunately, that's still too large for most of final varieties. So, so usually, for instance, like P2, I mean, there are many, many different uh, degeneration of a P2 so as, as a final variety. So we have to proceed. Then around 2015, 2016, Fujita and Lee prove something I call Fujita Lee evaluative criteria. So they give a equivalent description of this case stability. So basically, for instance, I mean, they prove like a different version of this. One version is that the photonic environment is non negative for all test configuration, it's equivalent to some environment I call beta x non negative. But here, beta is defined over all divider on birational model of X. So, so in other words, the original definition of case stability says that one should look at the all set GM degeneration. Now, they're in their equipment description, instead of that, people just have to look at the all divider over X. Still, that's kind, of, that's kind of infinite data because, because of course, for given x, all the dividers, I mean, uh, something like the Zariski Liebman space. So, so it, it's much la larger than x itself. But, but however, at least it's something you just relate to x itself, not to the, not to the degeneration and so on. So, so I want to quickly explain this statement and also what, what beta is here. So actually, I will say, for instance, if I rejoin us, if we could uh, define this beta x non negativity like many years ago, then we could already start to do research on, on, on it. However, it was a different geometer's key observation that one has to introduce photonic environment because it's related to Kalashnikov metric, and then. We, from, starting from there, we found this formulation of beta and then do lots of research on that. So to say this, this equi equivalence, let me just explain one direction that the right-hand side implies the left-hand side. So, so now I want to show basically, if I have assume the right-hand side, I, the, then the photonic environment is always non-negative for any degeneration. But apply the theorem above, I prove with Chidi, we can assume that the degenerate, the X, the special fiber is uh, irreducible. So for instance, I, I call it X zero. Then this X zero give a valuation of X, of this test configuration. But test configuration, remember it's by it's GM equivalent. So it's by rational to X cross A1. So if I reduce, if I restrict this valuation on the subfield of Kx, I get a, another valuation, which often is a multiple of C times some divisor valuation G. So, so in other words, from a test configuration whose central fiber is reducible, actually I get some divider G. And then, then the rest of the story is to connect these two environments. And uh, that's not very hard. Actually, one can calculate that the photonic environment 
is equal to C times the spader. So that's, how, that's why if we assume the right-hand side is always non-negative, then the left-hand side is always non-negative. Just use, just use this. For that invariant X is equal to C times beta E. So, so what is beta? Beta consists of two parts, which is A minus X. So the A is something, the AXE is something Bayesian geometers study all the time. It's called a log discrepancy. So the definition is uh, E leaves on some Bayesian model of Y. If I pull back minus KX, I compare with minus KY. The difference will be along the exception divider, which we call discrepancy. And that number we added by one, it's called the log discrepancy. And uh, the assumption that X has come out along the singularity is always that this number is positive. So if you first time say this, I mean, it might be a little bit confusing, but let me just say that this log discrepancy is some constant, which Bayesian geometers, I mean, the people study the Moon program study all the, all the time because it's basically the only event we know uh, which got improved under the minimal program process. So, so it's a key environment which control the minimal program process. And uh, so the S is, is a somewhat more new recent environment. Also, I think it also probably also appeared in some other subject. So it, it's, it's basically, expect the vanishing order. So, so basically on y, x, you pull back minus kx. The volume of minus kx will be just the self-intersection of minus kx to n. But now you, you take out part of e, then the volume will decrease. And, and then you in, increase the number t, the volume will keep decreasing. Uh, uh, once after t larger than the pseudo effective threshold, some number, this volume becomes zero. So this integral is actually for any non trivial divider g. This, this integral is actually a, a finite integral. And uh, this can be think about as uh, the average vanishing order of the linear system of uh, multiple of minus kx along g after normalization. So then there is a key invariant, which we call the stabi stability threshold is defined to be the A over X for all E. So remember beta is A minus X, but for some reason, uh, I mean, for some elementary reason to study A over S is, uh, is better. And then when then we define this, Stability threshold like that. And uh, a theorem which is related to, which is basically is the key input to the theorem I mentioned before, is that we show that X is stable if and only if that the delta X is larger than one. So, so originally when delta X is larger than one, people call it a uniform case stable. And the X is stable, it's equivalent to say that the A X E is larger than S X E. But the option here is that we assume A larger than S for all E, then the infimum is also positive. So you say that this is very much similar to what I was describing at the beginning, this kind of uniform, uniform property. And uh, more pre precisely, we have a version even for delta x is less or equal to one. We actually found the divider e, and which will induce a test configuration, this kind of GM, GM degeneration such that the, the delta x is actually computed by a over x. So actually, I think tomorrow, Zhu Quan, who, who I, I think who is now in the classroom, he will talk about uh, so basically my talk is like the introduction talk of his talk. And I think he would talk about more details about this theorem. So I leave the more explanation of this theorem to his talk. So maybe at this point, I think it's interesting to look at some, some examples. So we want to tell like a whether they are 
k-stable or not. So actually the hypersurface case is already interesting enough. So, so, so for hypersurface in PM plus one, then the degree, because of the final condition, we know the degree has to be at the most n plus one. And when, D, when degree is one, two, these are very, very simple. And uh, we know some special ones are k-stable. And you will say, actually, we know that, the, for instance, the k-stable assumption is an open condition. So if you know some of them are k-stable, then there is a Zariski open set, which are open stable. But, but the question is more like, a, sorry, one can ask, whether all smooth hypersurface are k-stable or not. So whether all of them have a current symmetry. So, so when A is equal to two, so that's basically the cubic surface. This was uh, the first non-trivial case and it was answered by TN. And uh, more generally, when the degree is uh, of the maximum, uh, I mean, is, uh, uh, is the maximum in the final range, in other words, is equal to d is equal to m plus one. Then Fujita prove all smooth final manifolds are k-stable, and uh, this degree was sig significantly lowered by work of Aben Zhuang. So they prove either d is equal to n, or when n is large, when d is larger than n plus two minus the cubic root of n that all smooth final manifolds are k-stable. So, so basically they prove some like a large range of the, of the final manifold, all of them are stable. But then for, this very, for the smaller one, we know one and two, next one is three. And when D is equal to three, actually we know after dimension four, we know k-stability is equal to GIT stability. So not just the smooth one, we actually also know the singular one as, as well. So, however, in general, between three and the range of uh, the drawing showed uh, in the middle, we, we actually don't know whether every smooth guys are k-stable or not. So let me just give you a very quick explanation on one way to prove this case stability. And that was basically the, the more recent approach. I, I think the uh, 80s, Ken invented uh, this approach of compute so-called alpha effect, but that's only in a sufficient condition. Remember our third invent is a if and only if condition. It's case stable if and only if the third axis is larger than one. So then of course, it's more rewarding to develop approach to compute data. And actually there is a somewhat a similar way to compute data com uh, as uh, the original way to, to compute the alpha. And uh, that was uh, using this so-called basis type divider. So basically you look at the H zero minus MKX, you, you pick up a basis and then you formulate this divider by the sum of, of this. Sorry, this D should be one over NM times NM. So D is a Q linear equal to minus KX. So there's a, there's M missing here. So, so then you, you consider all this kind of M basis time divider, and then you look at the log current threshold and it, you do compute the informer, then that log current threshold, this informer was uh, equal to delta proved by Fujita Odaka and Blom Janssen. So, so the option here is that the alpha event is, is also kind of the like informer of certain, certain low kind of threshold, but the divider chosen was uh, not the, the basis type divider. Here we, we look at the set of divider, which is much more complicated than in the alpha invariant case. However, the, the advantage of that, this is if and only if condition. So you, if you, so it should be, so if you have some way to estimate that data, it will tell you a lot more information about the case stability of the final work. And the open drawing, they actually have some like a very clever method to, 
to do the estimate in, in some cases, in many cases. So now I want to sw switch to the to the K-moduli space, which is basically the moduli space parameterizing final variety with some k-stability assumption. So, so the construction of the the this moduli space, I mean, you can roughly split it into two steps because you know often we know that the moduli space, the, the modular functor you are why is interesting if not. Uh, can usually cannot be finally reprinted by scheme. So you have to use more complicated objects. So you have the major geometry, for instance, when the KX is positive in the KSP modular space, which is a higher dimensional analog of MG, the stack is uh, the demand for a stack. But then for final variety, because we really want to study the final variety whose automobile could be is uh, of positive dimension, like a PN. That, that PN has catalyst metrics, so we don't, we don't want to throw that. Then we have to allow our stack to have a positive dimensional automobile inertia group. So in other words, we have to deal with uh, the, case, the situation that the stack is the audience stack. And uh, then the first part of this is about this stack, that we look at the all we look at the stack which parameterize the all the k semi stable final variety. So here KS stands for k semi stable final variety with a fixed dimension n and a fixed volume v. So this stack is the uh, audience stack, is of, of finite type. I mean, this statement is uh, not a very strong statement because you know, to have something as the audience stack you know, is not so restrictive in many cases, but you will see that uh, the a much more strong, uh, a, a much more uh, a much stronger information about case stack will be uh, explained later, and that probably explains why we consider case semi stack is more than necessary. But still, to prove this, it's not trivial. I actually, it, 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 it's not true. It needs some like a quite deep results. For instance, you have to first prove that you fix the dimension, fix the volume, and you assume k is stable, then the stack is, uh, I mean, this functor is bounded. Actually, here you can relax the condition. You, you fix the dimension, but you just fix the positive lower bound of the volume minus kx. And also you, you fix the positive lower bound of the delta invariant, which I defined the stability threshold, then it's already bounded. It's already bounded. So, so this already, for instance, removes some like a pathologic behavior, like a, you consider degeneration of P2. If you don't post the adding condition, just, just post the final condition. Then degeneration of P2 is really unbounded. It can be something like P S squared, P squared, C squared, as long as ABC satisfies this Markov equation. So, so, but as I said, this is just kind of like a mild assumption to, to remove, uh, to, to basically throw away this pathological example. Although, I mean, as I said, to prove this statement is not, uh, is not, Either at all. And then we also prove that the semi stability is an open condition. Actually, we prove that the delta, this function of delta, is uh, both lower semi continuous and is also constructible function. The, particularly if you look at the locus delta larger than, larger or equal to one, that's a characterization of the case semi stability condition, then that's open because it's constructible. Again, the proof of this theorem requires some like deep results from Bayesian tree. For instance, this uh, bounding of for uh, complements proved by Berger. So, however, okay, I mean, since I, so, I mean, the, the first 
part basically explain how once you have a boundaries and the openness, how you can the stack. That's pretty standard. But then we can we want to conclude the second part is that the moduli space indeed has a so called a, uh, sorry the moduli stack indeed has a so called a good moduli space. So so what good moduli space mean? I mean let me give you an example. So sorry for jumping back. So if we consider the stack of A1 more GM, then A1 is a fine, you have a GM action. Then it has a good module space, which is just given by a point because that's just the, the scheme corresponding to the invariant function read. However, if you consider P1 quotient by GM, then there is no good module, series, uh, good module space anymore because you have a two points which are far away on P1. And so, but this action of GM make this open orbit specialized to both of them. So this kind of phenomenon, this kind of bad orbital geometry will basically imply that uh, there is no, no good moduli space for this stack. So, so, so in other words, what good module space is kind of a, one want to localize this uh, this GIT quotient. By the way, this this notion of good module space was was introduced by Upper in his thesis. So so roughly speaking, a stack has a good module space if you can find a a tar open set a tar neighborhood of X of the good module space, and uh, if you take the Cartesian product, then basically locally this and locally this moving them from stack to good measure space is precisely given by a GIT action on some like a bioreductive group on some affine space. So in other words, locally you you can the existence of good modular space tells you you can cover your stack at locally you can cover it by stack of the form uh, spec A more G. Here G is a reductive group, A is a, a fine ring. And then the good modular space will be a gluing of the spec of the invariant function, function ring. And this gluing should satisfy some condition such as the, this good modular space has all the uniform property one. So actually, Upper Harper Leisler handles, they establish a general evaluative criteria to say that when this good module exists and also it's a separating. So this was pretty much like this famous Kiyomori theorem, but the Kiyomori theorem is for, for the Remanfer stack and they found a similar version for Ardin stack. And, uh, then our theorem say that this module stack has a good module space. And this good module space is actually a projective. So this I think is in some sense more important than that it, this good module space is actually a compact. So it has this like a compactness, which is a crucial for study degenerations. So to say this, for instance, for one parameter base, let's just say that you have, if I have a family of final varieties, such as I assume that the, the base, the genetic fiber, so, so not just, sorry, I assume some of the fiber, let's say I, just, I just assume one fiber is k semi stable. Now we immediately conclude that there is an open set of this curve, such as the fibers are all k semi stable. Moreover, we conclude that if we allow ourselves to have a finite base change, actually I can compatify this family such that the, the, the central fiber I throw in, in this commodification is, all, is also case semi-stable. And the moreover, if I have a two different case semi-stable throw in, then they are S equivalent. So in a sense that they degenerate 
to the same K polystable part of it. So this is a bit like the more space of the vector bundle that it's not a, you, we know that the modular space of vector bundle usually is not, a, I mean, separated, but uh, the good modular space is separated in the sense that uh, you, if you have a two semi-stable limiting point, then they are S equivalent. Here, that's the same thing, that if you have a two K semi-stable limiting point, they actually degenerate to the same K points of the final work. So let me just give you an example. So now again, we consider hypersurface. So we consider the first example is just this firmer hypersurface, but I show in a parameter T. So when T is not zero, then of course this, all of them just isomorphic to this firmer hypersurface. I mean, the smooth firmer hypersurface. But when T is equal to zero, this is equal to a cone over one dimension lower from a hypersurface. So this is actually a GM degeneration of smooth hyper, from a hypersurface to something which is a single from a hypersurface. But the, but the point is that, I mean, now you, if I want to study modular theory, I can, this, this from a hypersurface, it, it's, it's stable. So then we shouldn't allow this single one in our modular functor. Otherwise, our modular space will not be separated anymore. And uh, of course, this special one, the single one is still further variety with some like mild singularity. But he, now we, I'm saying it's not k-stable and this actually k-stability rule out, uh, rule out it from our functor. So actually one can also write uh, examples like a, of a similar flavor for smooth fund manifolds, but, but the, the construction is more complicated. That you have uh, some GM degeneration of final manifolds to, to another final manifold. So if you, you want to study modular theory of final manifolds, if you allow all of them, then let's just say this is uh, not, a, this is your behalf. However, if you, are, you put in the case semi-stability condition, that you have to rule out some of them, then miraculously the, the remaining become the, uh, the uh, well behaved in the modular theory. So this is uh, about the uniqueness. And also we can ask about the compactness. For instance, I consider the equation F4, T times F4 plus F2 uh, square two. So this is not a GM generation uh, anymore. This is just uh, uh, simply a family. And uh, so when T is not equal to zero, of course, this is, I mean, F2, F4 general, this is just general like a cortic surface, uh, sorry, cortic hypersurface, let's say in P3. But when T is equal to zero, what I got is basically the, the double, double the, the twice of a quadratic, a quadratic hypersurface. Then we know this twice of quadratic surface is indeed GIT stable. So, so if I want to study the GIT moduli, I mean, this one, uh, there is no, this one should be the limit. But however, you know, in our theory of final variety moduli, the limit has to be a final variety. It has to be normal. Yeah, actually, it has to be KOT. So this F2 square is not the right one. and. Uh, I give you an exercise to think about what should be the right one in, 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 the, in their situation. What should be the replacement of the, of the right one? I mean, our theory just tells you that in general, you can find one case stable guy, but uh, one, can, one can think about what should be the replacement in, in, in their situation. So, so the last part is, to say, is saying that this modular space is not just a, a property, it's actually projective. And it project, actually there's a natural lie bundle called the same lie bundle, which is uh, ample on this proper algebraic space, which give you the projectivity of that. So, so the same lie bundle, the, the definition, I mean, is not very complicated. For instance, if I consider a family of, uh, 
U over B, such as the fiber of final varieties, the base is a normal proper base. I mean, this doesn't always happen, but let's say we have such a family. Then the same line boundary is just given by the Cartier divider, which is the push forward of minus K U over B power to N plus one. So the dimension is N. So if I push, if I take the N plus one, then the, this cycle, the, the dimension is uh, the, the base dimension minus one because the fiber dimension is the N. And then the push word will give me a, for instance, a way divider on the base, but actually it's always a Cartier divider. And uh, we show that this same line bundle can be first descend to the stack and also descend to the uh, Q line bundle on the good modular space. And we actually can show its ample. I mean, the reason people expect it to be ample is uh, if you X is smooth final manifold with current symmetric, then the same line bundle itself has a natural metri metric, such as its curvature form has a way Peterson metric. So, so this way imply that this line bundle is, uh, uh, because it has a positive curvature, it, then it has to be ample. But, but again, as usual, this kind of uh, thinking only works for the fibers are uh, smooth. And uh, to prove the positivity in general, we actually have to develop a completely different uh, algebraic strategy. Um, I mean, this was research, research, essentially done by, a, by combined two papers, first by Kodogoni Patakafavi and second by myself and Zhuang. So, so the proof using the st standard package of positivity from KSB theory, which was uh, some like Hodge theory and uh, plus this call us like a, a study of uh, productivity of light bundle on modular space. So, so, and then the second part is uh, how we using this case stability by looking at the hard uh, nash filtration. And uh, putting this together, we can show that the same light bundle is, is positive. Okay, let me just stop here. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the speaker for a very interesting talk. And we have uh, time for questions, comments. Well, no, any questions, comments? No? Okay. Um, again, thank you very much for your talk, and we will reconvene tomorrow morning at 9.30 Eastern Time.